Hello and welcome to a ship buyer's concept ship guide for the Anvil Terrapin. It's on sale now with LTI until Monday the 29th of August for $195 excluding taxes. So what is the ship? What's going on here? Presenting the Anvil Aerospace Terrapin class scanner exploration ship. The Terrapin's watchword is protection with extensive shield systems and armor layers designed to provide maximum possible defense for pilot and crew. While it lacks maneuverability of a dedicated fighter, it does maintain an advanced hard-hitting array of weapons intended to keep the most fearsome Vandal Raider at bay. The Terrapin has an all-round reputation as a ship that can get you um, beyond the jump points boo, and bring you back safely to civilization. I like the idea of this Terrapin. It is really small. Um, it's 19.5 by 14.5 by 6 meters. This is basically um, the same size as an Avenger, but the ship is more oblong than an Avenger. It basically has more, I'm just going to say usable space, but it's not usable space because all of the space on this oblong ship is basically taking up with armor and redundant bulkheads. Hard point wise, it's got a size 4 utility mount, which it's basically uh, going to allow it to do lots of different roles, and we'll talk about that again in a second. It's got a uh, big size 5 remote turret on the front, on its nose, uh, and it has the possibility, according to the, the law and the um, uh, the concept cell guide, uh, for another couple of size 2 laser cannons, or, or some more size 2 laser cannons, although I'm not entirely sure where they go. Uh, it has lots of armour, um, powerful shields, big power plant. Uh, and the idea of this is to... Um, take laser weapons with this ship and then you're just a, a floating tank in space. You're nice and safe, you've got loads of stamina and sustain, you don't need to go back to port, you can take a beating. It's intended roles though, it's got two crew positions, although apparently one pilot can make good use of the ship. It is more of a tank. Its uh, common uses are for scanning and exploration. In fact, it looks to be being positioned by CIG to be the dedicated premier explorer ship in the same way the Prospector was a dedicated mining ship. Um, although I do think there are other roles for the ship. Um, and I, I think we'll probably see the exploring mechanics kind of tailored to this in its first instance anyway. Um, it is going to do really well in dangerous situations. It's got that size 5 remote turret on its nose. It's not super fast, but it's got a huge amount of armour. It's really shielded. Um, it's going to have a standard good scanning arrays as well. That size 4 utility mount, um, which you could take off uh, the scanning arrays or whatever, I suppose, uh, and put in, um, according to the design document, uh, search and rescue um, type pods or even command and control type stuff. I expect that to have quite a lot of uses, a, a large utility mount. It's recommended for the ship that you take um, basically laser weapons rather than ballistics as the ship needs a good amount of sustain. It's got that power plant to be able to um, keep on fighting and you're going to be exploring in it is the is it main role. So you're going to be going off into the distance why take ballistics if you don't know when you're going to be able to stock up? Use those laser weapons. You don't need to refill them with ammo. You've got a big power plant. For a game design perspective, they, uh, as I said, they wanted that it to be like an initial exploring platform in the same way the Prospector was. But it's tank-like. It's a big tanky ship. I say big. It's a small tanky ship. Um, and it's going to suit pilots that want to definitely survive. Um, want to be going to possibly dangerous systems. That want to be doing exploration where they know that there's a good possibility uh, of going to be in a dogfight. Yes. Great tanky exploration ship. Uh, and I think it's probably going to be one of the favourite two-man ships in the verse. It's nice and simple. Big shields, big armour, big enough turret um, that you've got big weapons on there. You could have twin linked size 4 guns on that turret. Um, and there's obviously that talk of having more size 2 uh, lasers as well. But the ship is really small. And I see players stocking up on these quite small ships on carriers. Um, and I think it will probably make quite a good escort ship due to its size and stamina. It's got four rotational thrusters as well, two on each side of its body, um, and although it's not the fastest ship, I think it's going to be manoeuvrable enough to be able to fight off dogfighters as it's got that turret too. I also expect we'll see a lot of these deployed in a mixture of covert and obvious ops, so literally um, uh, running interference, it's got that big scanning array, it's going to be able to collect data in dangerous territory, and then even if the enemy know where it is, it's going to be able to try and get out. It's, it's a tank, it's going to be able to do um, 
much more obvious that covert ops than other ships will be able to do in much more dangerous situations. So I expect to see a lot of these running around in big fleet battles doing some weird covert ops type stuff as well. One of its other roles that it talks about on the law is basically that it would be a really good rescue ship um, being able to rescue soldiers under fire. It could be under pressure itself from multiple craft. It's It's got that tank, it's got that sustainability to be able to take a beating to help people to to do what it needs to do in a fight even though it knows it's going to be under attack let's look at the value of the ship and alternatives as well here i'm going to try and convince myself basically to not buy a particular ship by looking at its value its role and how it compares to other ships in its kind of area of operation so the terrapin is 195 dollars excluding taxes that's quite expensive uh, and is approaching other ships like the Constellation Aquila, which is $275. But this is another multi-role explorer, but it comes with um, loads of guns on, and uh, it comes with an Urza rover and a snub ship as well included in that price. Um, so for me, I see the Constellation Aquila as a tier up from that. Yeah, the Terrapin's possibly going to have um, a lot more armor and shield and um possibly a better scanning array uh, as well, and it will come down to personal preference. But that Aquila, that allows for more people. It's got it's got ground kind of exploration capabilities as well, much more so than the Terrapin would have. But another alternative though, um, from the slightly more cheaper option, would be a Freelancer DUR, which has room for a Dragonfly <laughs> to fly into it, as we saw um, basically in the uh, Gamescom video. But it's much cheaper at $125, and personally, I prefer it. Uh, I'm not one for super slow craft, although I do um, think that the Terrapin, not, probably not super slow, but it is going to be slow. It is going to be. Uh, it is going to be a tank. Um, just keep those ships in mind, anyway. Obviously, if you wanted to do a solo exploration ship, the Terrapin would be a good choice. It says um, that it's perfectly flyable with a single crewman, although two would be recommended. But there's something like the 315P might be a, a, a better choice if you're just a single explorer and um, wanting to explore um, in mainly in space, um, I suppose, because you're not going to be able to get that much done on the ground just on foot. Um, and that 315P much cheaper as well than any of the ships we've just discussed. Personally, for me, it's gonna come down to how many weapons can I mount on it. I like the idea of it being a exploration type APC that possibly could go in uh, an Idris or uh, possibly even the Polaris Corvette when we see exactly what the Polaris can, can mount and exactly what that ship's about. But I like the idea of it as an APC. I like the idea of it being a tank as a ship that's not necessarily good at dogfighting, but it's good at fighting off dogfighters. Um, and for me, yeah, as I said, we have to see where those rest of those laser mounts go. We have to see exactly what we can put on the ship. And we have to see what the FAQs say over the next week as well. And that's an important part of it as well. There's gonna be questions that are answered that aren't answered here yet. So we have to revisit the Terrapin uh, in a later video. But remember as well, you don't need to buy any of these ships with real money. Even if you love them, there will be, um, they're gonna to be totally available to purchase in game with in game currency once the game goes live. And even possibly uh, before that it, with short term rental and purchase with Alpha UEC and Rec once they're flight ready. You just need a game package to start you off. Link in the description uh, for various other videos and ship buyers guides and all that sort of stuff. As I said, once we have the uh, FAQs, which CIG will be doing about the ship, uh, if there's anything that we haven't covered, we will uh, revisit that the Terrapin. I like the ship, just think it's quite expensive. Um, anyway guys, remember that you can win a Dragonfly by commenting on any of our videos um, that are Star Citizen based during the month of August. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell me what you think about the Terrapin. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's too expensive? Do you prefer your freelancer DUR? Um, please tell me in the description or the comments in fact below and I will see you in the verse. I almost forgot as I'm extremely tired and exhausted in fact from watching that 3.0 gameplay uh, that Star Citizen uh, CIG put on at Gamescom. If you have not seen that yet, link in the description. It's worth seeing that gameplay for Star Citizen 3.0 that is coming before the end of the year. Star Citizen 2.7 has been renamed to 3.0 because it's a big release at the end of the year. Watch it, it's superb. Uh, but it's also in the link in the description for a uh, ship buyer's guide 
uh, on more of a paper um, on the website standard um, so you can see the stats and stuff there as well uh, and those uh, ship buyers guides there will get more and more fleshed out um, as we know more uh, and then standardized once the item system is um, is fully out item system 2.0 so hopefully with star citizen 3.0 we'll have item system 2.0 uh, and we will have all uh, of the information we need to be able to compare ships much more accurately